Hello, 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 and welcome, Sky Kids. Wait, wait, wait. I, I messed it up. I messed it up. Honk, honk, Sky Kids. This is to to have a talk with a very special guest, you guys. This person is that game company's CEO and creative director for Sky Children of the Light, uh, Genova Chen. Welcome, Genova. How are you? Thank you for having me here. Uh, very, very, very excited and also nervous. Usually I don't do live stream. That's not my specialty. Uh, thank you for finding time uh, to do this with us. I'm sure that everybody at the studio is super busy with the PC launch. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, Sky has been a game we've developed since 2012. So it's been 12 years in the making. And finally, we're on the PC platform and I can tell you that everybody who worked on the PC port are really, really excited and pay attention to everything that's going on right now. And, and that's why I really appreciate you being here with us, uh, Genova. It's it's <laughs> not very common to have you know the CEO of the studio to come in and, and have this time of connection uh, with with fans alike, Sky Children alike, and I'm sure that's really important. A lot of these people have been really uh, expecting a moment to to have a, a live moment with you so my appreciations to you in their name and there you go bunches of hearts we're seeing all yeah. of those hearts thank, thank you so much and uh, you know I, I mentioned this before but the company that game company started back in 2006 because of uh, you guys the gamers who played our game and right the letter to encourage us to found the company and ever since we've been making games for you and uh, thank you for your support thank you for the hearts uh we survived for 18 years and uh we're going strong that's yeah. uh, a great segue genova for us to get started uh so it's been a while 2006 uh, uh of tgc as a as a gaming studio right and so how has sky as a game in TGC as a studio evolved within this time, uh, especially from your original vision, right? Like when, when you uh, started this company and, and when you started creating this game to what it has become now, uh, how, how does it feel and how has both of these evolved throughout this time? Um, you know, we when I was um, just a student, um, Kind of study in the the graduate school uh that was 2003 there's a columbine shooting where two high school students uh bring machine gun and and grenades into the school and cause you know many people uh die perish and at the time yeah video game was considered as the cause of such violence and uh when we were working in the school um and the school had a program to, uh, you know, reward students to innovate uh, on new ways to tell the stories. Um, and we have this uh, game uh, innovation grant, which asks us to pitch for ideas that could show, you know, games can be made in different ways. Um, and so starting from that project, we worked on this game that's not violent, you know, the, the, the reverse of violence, um, not addictive. Um, and we focus on making the player feel uh, a positive feeling rather than, you know, destroying things. We, we're actually uh, healing uh, the world somehow. Um, and that was an experiment project, but many people who played our game kept told us that uh, they cried for the game. Uh, we, were, we were all very shocked because at that, in 2004, 2005, people don't associate video game as something that would make people cry for a good reason and uh, it was those players who's touched by our game uh, they, they wrote a very heartfelt letter to us uh, telling us sharing a little bit about their life and how our game is changing their well-being and how we should really you know start a, a business uh, to show and through through like commercial games to show the world that games doesn't have to be always about fighting and competition, that it could be a, a force of good and it could be considered as literate, li liberal arts um, and make people's life better. Um, that, 
that was just very inspiring. And you know, we we pretty much dropped everything just to follow the you know the the request from the players and try to start a company before we even graduate. And that's how that game co company started. And till this day, I still feel we are, you know, working hard on achieving what our players asked us 18 years ago. Yeah. And, and how about Sky, right? Uh, almost five years old across all major gaming platforms, right? Like, has your vision for Sky come to fruition? How, how has that vision evolved to what it is now? Yeah, so so honestly, I you know I grew up playing games um, since very young age, and you know as a gamer, I'm also an introverted person. Game is pretty much the medium that create make me feel not alone. I made many friends through video games. Uh, I find my career with video games, and I've learned most of my English and my. <laughs> you know, uh, geology and histories we play video games. And so to me, game is like a childhood friend, you know, and it's, uh, it's like family. Um, but gr as I grow up, I start to see, um, you know, games are somewhat despised by the rest of the society, as particularly by my parents' generation and, you know, uh, a big portion of my friends who don't play games also see this as a, a waste of time, um, or a distraction. Um, and so I wanted to legitimize this medium. You know, I love this medium. I want this medium to be loved by more people. And so w what is the best way to, you know, make more people love games? Uh, by making another game that you already love to play, probably it wouldn't change the status quo, right? And so the only way I can see to make the way to make more people love games is by innovate the games and creating new types of experience, particularly new type of emotional experience. So it will attract the people who don't see game as their entertainment medium right. or artistic medium to consider, you know, uh, come to try games or, you know, consider using game as a, as a canvas to, to paint their own art. Um, and so starting from you know, cloud to flow to flower to journey. What we are trying to prove is that games can be an art piece. You know, games can make you think about life and think about, you know, humanity. And, it, it, and it's not just like make you feel differently. It also needs to make you feel very strong emotion so that you would remember. And so from, from flower, we start to experiment with, you know, uh, three act storytelling that we learned from the film school, but reinterpret with gameplay to use the gameplay to touch you. Uh, and it was quite successful. And so when we moved from flower to journey, we focus on whether we can do the same emotional impact, but happening among multiple players. Uh, and at the time, video game has a bad reputation for playing games online. like. Nobody wants to turn on their microphone or listen to toxic, you know, communications. And so we were thinking, can we potentially, you know, not only touch the players and let them have an emotional uh, experience shared together, but also, you know, create a positive connection between people rather than a toxic connection. Um, yeah. And, uh, so, so th that's like the first half of the company. We spent the first six years just experiment with how games can make you feel and then prove that on a commercial um, uh, platform like PlayStation. Um, yeah, and, and then what happened after Journey till Sky, there's a huge gap of the rest of 12 years. A lot of people thought we just disappeared or maybe the company has go this, you know bankrupt or something, right? Uh, what happened is it took us seven years to develop Sky just to get it out onto the market. And we only made this version to be on iOS. And then, you know, eight year game, we, we, we shipped it on the Android. Then nine year in, we shipped on the Switch. 10 years in, we shipped on the PlayStation. And now 12 years in, we're on the PC finally. Um, 
it's a it's a very long process um but i'll probably you know jump into sky a bit later <laughs> yeah and that's I, that's where we are and that's that's fascinating has has the vision changed like is it more than you thought it could have been from the original sketching on your books how how did that progress for sky so one of my biggest heroes in gaming is Fumito Ueda, who created um, uh, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, right? And uh, so I'm, you know, I'm certainly, if I'm a fan of somebody, I would just try to study as much as how they make their things. So, so it's uh, Ueda san and he, he talked about how uh, when he started a, a project, he would look for that center, um, how to say, the the most important image, uh, like he would do the concept art, a sketch to create an image that represent the emotion he's going for. Uh, and then the game kind of evolved around this image. Uh, and that's why most of his work, his works have this very well thought out world with culture and with stories, because he's a he's a visual thinker. Um, and so when, when we approach our games, uh, I also try to start a game with an image, uh, with a sketch and a feeling. Uh, and then I would work with a composer to come up a music, uh, like a theme. Um, so, so the combination of the music emotion and the visual emotion, you, you, you get the, you know, the central seed of the look and feel. And then you evolve the mechanics and the story around it. Um, yeah, that, that's how I usually start a project. And, and here we are uh, to PC. <laughs> millions and millions of downloads. It, it, did you have that in mind when, when you were uh, working with the team and you guys were still small 12 years ago uh, to, to where we are right now for Sky? It, does it blow your mind is my question. Does it blow your mind <laughs> that so many people... Uh, feel attached and feel connected uh, to the game and to one another through the game? Yeah, when we worked on the, the Sky game initially, we thought we would just simply port Journey. We take what we learn from storytelling Journey and make a premium game on the phone. Uh, and so hopefully it, it would reach more people. Like one of the lessons we learned from Journey is that a lot of the players who played Journey would write letters to us. I think we have about 1,600 emails from players just want to reach out to us to tell us their stories. And uh, many of them said this is the first game they shared with their wife and daughter. Uh, most of the owners of PlayStation, like I would say more than 90% of PlayStation owners are men. So they said this is the first game their daughter finished. Uh, you know, people don't finish games these days. Um, and I, I, I also heard from a friend who went to Japan uh, and did a meetup with Journey fans. And uh, he told me like more than 60% of the fans are women. Uh, so that was very shocking to me because I, I, you know, I thought gamers are mostly dudes like myself. Um, but to realize that, you know, when you make fighting games it probably will turn off a lot of a lot of female players but when you make a game about emotions and you know the beauties of the world and life that that is very uh, how to say like emotionally accessible um and so when we decide to leave playstation and work on sky on a mobile platform we really believe that the games are meant to be played by everybody not just hardcore gamers but you know people of all ages um and particularly with the success of Journey, we know women would play our game. And so how can we essentially uh, create a game that would appeal to more, more than just traditional gamers? Uh, we know we can attract more players than how many players who played Journey. We just didn't expect to attract, you know, almost uh, 50 times more, right? That, that's the surprise. Mm -hmm. 